uh, Ranking Member Carvajal for a opening statement, five minutes. You're recognized. Thank you, Chairman Webster, and I'll take up the rest of your time that you don't want to All take right. on. So, uh, Today we're gathered here to discuss and review the Coast Guard's acquisition programs for new cutters, boats, airplanes, helicopters, shoreside infrastructure, and information technology. Prior to getting started, I would like to echo the concerns expressed by Chairman Webster regarding the Coast Guard's handling of sexual assault and harassment cases during the 1980s through the early 2000s. The investigation itself, dubbed Operation Fouled Anchor, took place from 2014 through 2020. After the conclusion of the investigation, the Coast Guard then made the reprehensible and irresponsible decision to hide the investigation, to hide the investigation, and its findings from Congress and the American public as well. Victim privacy is paramount is a paramount concern, but choosing not to disclose to Congress the existence of the investigation and purposely hiding it from any reporting mechanism is shameful, to say the least. Earlier this week, Ranking Member Larson, Vice Ranking Member Scolton, and I sent a letter to, to the GAO requesting they review the Coast Guard's handling of this investigation and management of their sexual assault prevention, response, and recovery program. I look forward to getting answers and improving the Coast Guard procedures. To all the victims that never saw justice and went unheard for years, I, we hear you and feel your pain. You were brave for coming forward and deserve closure. We will do our best to remedy this and prevent this from happening to other service members. I am sorry you have to relive this pain again. Now turning to the topic, of this hearing. The Coast Guard is in the middle of modernizing their fleet, and yet they continue to operate ships that are well past their intended service life. This is in part due to lack of funding from Congress, but also due to delays in production of newer cutters. As we've learned from multiple GAO reports, the Coast Guard's acquisition typically comes in delayed and over budget. This is concerning. This is a concerning trend that I hope we can get to the bottom of today, but it is not something that can be fixed overnight. Improving the acquisition program requires investing more into the Coast Guard so that they can bolster their oversight. It also requires investing more in U.S. shipbuilding to ensure we have shipyards capable of building the assets we need. U.S. shipyards depend on contracts from the Navy and Coast Guard to support their business. But the Coast Guard is often outbid by the size and value of Navy contracts. We must bring on new cutters, shoreside infrastructure, and IT systems quickly. Not only do modern assets mean improved mission readiness, they also mean better quality of life for our Coasties. Newer cutters mean better connectivity and the ability for Coasties to con contact their families while at sea, leading to improved mental health and higher retention rates. Service members want their families to live in the best quality housing. That starts with investing more in shoreside infrastructure and eliminate, eliminating the estimated $3 billion backlog. Ultimately, our service members deserve to live and work in assets that aren't on the brink of failure. Congress and Coast Guard leadership owe it to the personnel to deliver this. That is why we cannot revert to fiscal year 2022 funding levels, and we must fund the Coast Guard at a higher level than requested. GAO has recognized that the funding typically requested by the Coast Guard underestimates their needs for recapitalization. Before I conclude, I want to wish Ms. Mack congratulations on a successful career in public service and wish you a happy retirement. You and your team have done important oversight, and I thank you for all your hard work. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chair. And uh, I 